Good evening and welcome to Patriot Pets. My name is Lake Green. I'm so excited to be back with another video. You might be wondering already why I'm not at the historical site. This video is not going to be your typical Patriot Pets segment where we are on the field at an unknown or known, well-known site, vice versa, whatever, um, actually doing the groundwork and showing you up close a notable uh, little piece of American history. Rather, this is the revival of a lecture series. I'd made a couple videos in the past where I'd uh, been here and discussed um, Baron von Steuben and, and uh, Benjamin Franklin, but I've decided to revive uh, a crucial segment um, and series for the, for the channel because I really felt it was valuable and necessary in terms of spreading and educating um, people about American history, spreading the details. Uh, and this series, I'm so excited to announce, will be called the 1776 series. We're going to discuss in detail from every battle from start to finish uh, this fall, um, the fall of 1776 campaign of the American Revolution. Everybody knows about 1776. Most people know about the fact that we declared independence from Great Britain uh, on July 4th of that year with the Declaration of Independence. Uh, everybody knows that Washington crossed the Delaware in the blizzard and won a miraculous Christmas victory, um, but not many people know the in-betweens. Um, and truly, the campaign of 1776, that fall of the American Revolution, the early war, was the most pivotal time in all of American history. Uh, so many times that fall, and really throughout the entire war itself, uh, the American cause, the American army, came from inches of utter defeat, of destruction. Uh, the nation and the cause of an independent nation would have died on the spot any logical person at so many instances uh, living would say, there's no way the Americans are going to win here. The, the war is over. It's hopeless. This is ridiculous. And yet somehow, some way, whether it's the hand of God or a higher power or just luck, the American uh, army and the American cause achieved victory and escaped defeat uh, and destruction by the skin of their teeth so many times. So we're going to go in detail this fall about this entire campaign. Before I go any further on the topic of this video, for a full synopsis in depth, if you're really interested, I highly recommend reading the late, great David McCulloch's 1776. And I have to say the late, great, because he passed away just last month. May he rest in peace. What a what a loss this is for any, any American historian. Mr. McCulloch was a great, great author. And what an intelligent scholar and uh, you know a historian, student of American history. He wrote uh, the John Adams biography right behind me there, an excellent book that won the Pulitzer. Uh, and 1776 is a, a phenomenal book in my own, in its own right. It's my favorite book by him. That'll tell you everything about the 1776 campaign, well more than I can tell you here in a 10-minute video. But today's subject will be on the Battle of Brooklyn, the first battle, the opening battle of the fall campaign of 1776, and the largest battle of the American Revolution, I may add, in terms of troop concentration. So, 246 years ago, on August 27, 1776, a massive force of British troops defeated much of the Continental Army in Brooklyn, giving the British access to the strategically important port of New York City. On your screen now should be a picture of the men under the command of Brigadier General Lord Sterling, William Alexander, and Mordecai Gist, a major of the 1st Maryland Regiment, uh, the Maryland 400, who desperately held off a British charge um, around the Old Stone House. They charged at the British. Actually, they didn't hold off a British charge. They charged at the British and Hedgen soldiers that were advancing towards the retreating Americans. And these men were immortalized in the Maryland 400. You may uh, note that last fall around this time, we visited the Old Stone House in Brooklyn, New York, and highlighted the Maryland 400 men. Uh, they're buried on the grounds right around that house. 400 men, pretty much almost like the Spartan 300 in ancient Greece at Thermopylae, uh, you know, sacrificed their lives to save their country and their army. Uh, so we'll talk about them later on. Nearly two months earlier, though, the Continental Congress had declared American independence on July 4th. Absolutely. We have the great uh, great Declaration of Independence right here. Absolutely. Um, and the American Army was buoyant after its tactical defeat of the British in Boston earlier that year. They pushed the British out of, out of uh, Boston. 
the opening stage of the war last year uh, in 1775, Lexington and Concord, uh, and then the siege of Boston, which resulted after Bunker Hill. Uh, that was the opening, you know, uh, act of the American Revolution, and the Americans were lucky due to a strategical victory uh, by Washington to um, capture the Dorchester Heights and also have Henry Knox carry hundreds of artillery pieces miles and miles away from from Fort uh, Ticonderoga in upstate New York, a feat of engineering even to this day, uh, really brought the Americans victory there. So in late June, William Howe and his brother, Admiral Richard Howe, arrived in New York City with a fleet never before seen on American soil. Over 32,000 men and nearly 400 ships anchored off the shores of Staten Island. Uh, The invasion force here that arrived in America to put down the rebellious British colonies uh, would not be uh, rivaled until D-Day in 1944. And among them were thousands of German Hessians, mercenaries that had been conscripted into the service of the crown, and these men were ruthless soldiers. Excellent soldiers, but also ruthless. And they'll play a key role in the war. They'll be discussed in detail throughout this series. Um, and Washington and his army were outnumbered immensely. Um, the British force numbered over 32,000 men, 400 ships, the most powerful navy uh, in the world at the time. Uh, and the American army in total only numbered about 15,000 men max. Uh, and Washington was in a precarious situation because he had his... He had to defend the entire city of New York. He ceded Staten Island to the British. That's where they made their base. But he still had to defend Manhattan Island and Brooklyn. Uh, and any any you know military technician will know that defending an area like that is a strategical nightmare because you, they don't even control the waterways. If you don't control the Navy, then you really can't really can't defend New York for long. And the Americans wouldn't. Um, so Washington took the bold risk of splitting his army in half and putting 9,000 men in Brooklyn. Um, so at Brooklyn Heights, he stationed 6,000 men with General with General Israel Putnam. Old Putt, as they called him, was a stern man uh, from New England. Uh, and Generals John Sullivan and Lord Sterling William Alexander uh, defended the American position on Gowanus Heights with some 3,000 men. And that was the front position of uh, the American army in Brooklyn, Uh, At the time, Brooklyn, New York is paved over to the city today, but at the time it was rolling rolling hills and farmland. So 3,000 men defended the heights of Gowanus. Directly behind them was the Gowanus Creek, which was about 80 yards wide. Remember that. That'll play a role later in the battle. There were only three main passes to Gowanus. Uh, The Gowanus Road, the Bedford Road, and the Flatbush Road. Washington had his men defend all of them. Uh, So the Americans felt like they were in a decent position to resist the British. They were going to be defensive hold the high ground and hopefully keep the British at bay, lure them into another type of action, kind of like Bunker Hill, where they had the experienced British regulars kind of coming up the high ground, the inexperienced Americans just kind of sitting there and picking them off from the top. This wouldn't be the case because on the night of August 26th, British General Sir Henry Henry Clinton uh, learned of the Jamaica Pass, uh, a back road to the northeast of the American lines. This road was only defended by five American militiamen. So he proposed to General Howe that they march an entire contingent of army British soldiers around the Americans through this back pass, which the Americans pretty much had no idea, you know, lightly defended, thought the British didn't have any, didn't know anything of it, uh, and then which would actually completely expose the American right flank and put the British arm, British army pretty much in the rear of the American lines uh, in Gowanus. So that would completely dismantle their entire plan. Throughout the night, they marched right through that pass. Um, and I'm not going to go into details for the sake of brevity. Uh, please consult the book, 1776, for more information. I'm going to keep going. But anyway, they got through the pass uh, pretty easily. They stopped at a tavern. The tavern uh, owner was forced at gunpoint to lead them through the pass, even though he was an American patriot and did not want to help the British. Pretty much told them, we'll kill you if you don't show us where the where the road goes. He did. Um, and pretty much... The British got through the pass, got into a good position, slept for a couple hours, uh, and at 9 in the morning after a couple hours of rest, uh, they fired a cannon, which signaled to a diversionary force in the front of Gowanus of Hessians and some British soldiers under General James Grant to attack in a frontal assault against the British lines, or the American lines. So the British soldiers right off, the, right off in the front of the American positions attack the Americans. The Americans think, oh, this must be their full attack, 
you know, let's commit our men. And so they're all, you know, preoccupied with the Americans in front of them, fighting them in depth. And then, unbeknown to them, unbeknownst to them, the British Army comes right around their rear and hits them in the extreme right flank. So quickly, things completely disintegrate for the Americans. Uh, their entire right flank is turned. There's fierce fighting on positions uh, known as uh, the Gowanus uh, Heights and also Battle Pass in modern-day Greenwood Cemetery where hand-to-hand -hand combat ensues and a lot of men are killed on both sides. Um, and basically, it's all for naught because the American position is completely turned and, and the Americans have to retreat frantically on the, on the right. On the extreme American left, as the British are attacking from the front and coming in from the side, now they're encircling a large contingent of men like wedged in between here uh, on the American left. And there's over a thousand men, almost a thousand men that are trapped against the British all the way on the left uh, uh, near the Gowanus Canal and the Old Stone House or the Vect Courtlieu House uh, in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, and these men are uh, under the overall command of uh, Brigadier General William Alexander or Lord Sterling. Uh, John Sullivan had retreated with his men from the right, hopeless, hopelessly, and ordered uh, Sterling to retreat. But Sterling found out really quickly that there was nowhere for him to retreat to, really, because the British were, were coming across the land right at, his, right at his rear. So his men had no choice but to retreat across the Gowanus Creek. And at the time, the Gowanus Creek, which is it's pretty much not even there today, it's paved over, it's very, you know, it's Brooklyn, it's a city now. But then it was a massive creek, and it was over 80 yards wide. And it was deep in some places. And a lot of these American men could not swim. They weren't swimmers. So imagine the scene. Hundreds and hundreds of men frantically streaming across the, the river, try, throwing away their arms, their, their knapsacks, their muskets, anything they have, and just trying to swim desperately across the river, all while the British and Hessian soldiers are firing cannons right at them, marching up behind them and shooting, shooting at them with their backs turned in a running battle. It was complete and utter chaos. And had it not been for William Alexander's heroism and the men of the 1st Maryland Regiment, over almost a thousand Americans would have been captured right there and a huge chunk of Washington's army would have been decimated right off the bat. Um, in, the, in really the opening salvo, the first real battle of the American Revolution. Um, so basically, these these some 287 men, that's the exact estimate, 277 to 287 men, even though they're known as the Maryland 400 in popular culture, from the 1st Maryland Regiment were under the command of Major Mordecai just that day. It was really Colonel William Smallwood that would command these uh, men, um, but he was not present at the battle because he had court-martial duty. So Major Mordecai just was a young man. He was only, was only th some 30, in his mid-30s at the time. Uh, Lord Sterling was about 50. And these two men rally these Maryland troops in a desperate frontal uh, 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 rear guard action against over 2,000 British and Hessian soldiers with cannons in a fixed position uh, to, to hold off the British advance and allow hundreds of American men to retreat across the Gowanus Creek. And so pretty much what happens is these 287 men charge into certain death, into musket and cannon fire. Think of it, 287 men against 2,000. Just charge right at them, and they're decimated. They're all killed. Almost all of them are killed. Uh, Mordecai Gist and uh, Lord Sterling are captured uh, by the British, and yet over a couple hundred American soldiers would retreat and survive. Overall, there was some immense and significant casualties for the American army in Brooklyn. Uh, it was not good at all. It was a bad day for Washington. And Washington actually stood at Brooklyn Heights um, in the rear position with his other 6,000 men watching them uh, and said, Good God, what brave fellows I must uh, this day lose. We, with his binoculars, saw the, um, the Maryland men fight desperately. Uh, and he was almost speechless, just staring at them. Good God, you know, look at these men. They're, they're going to certain death to save our army. And uh, Washington himself lamented that greatly. And in total, the American army would suffer 2,000 men dead, wounded or captured. The British would suffer 400 casualties. So this would begin the campaign of 1776. Thanks so much for watching. This has been the Battle of Brooklyn uh, on Patriot Pats. I'm Lake Green. Rate, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more coming at you next.
Have a wonderful day.